All right, welcome back. In this lesson, moving forward, since we talked about the, the cost control in the last lesson, here I'm gonna talk about the quality controls that you as a project manager, and this is an often overlooked in my experience area where PMs don't really focus too much on the quality being delivered. They're focused mostly on deadlines and making sure all the tasks are done, teams are performing well, and so on. But quality and delivering a quality product to your clients and communicating internally as well is key. So in this lesson, I'm gonna talk about how to plan quality management, how to talk about managing quality, and then of course, how to control quality as well. So let's jump right in. Let's take a look at all of these concepts in detail and let's move forward. Welcome back, super excited. Chapter eight in this lesson, I'm gonna talk about the project quality management. Keep in mind, this is not the quality assurance, right? So it's not the QA side of your project that the quality team is actually managing and making sure the project, whether it's a software-based project or any other project is being uh, checked for defects free, for example, or is bug free and so on. So it's not that quality management, but as a project manager, you're also inclined towards ensuring that the entire project is quality oriented. So when you're delivering it to the customer, they're actually happy, right? So that's the upside. Your client becomes happy, whether it's the client or even the internal stakeholders and other team members. But yet the downside is of course the cost attached to it, right? So the more you spend time on quality assurance and management, of course, it comes with a cost. So let's take a look at what those are in this lesson. Here's the overview. So the quality management includes all of the processes for incorporating the company's quality policy regarding planning, managing, and controlling projects. And additionally, product quality requirements in order to meet the stakeholders objectives, whether they're clients or internal. The processes are as follows. So typically divided into three different areas. First is the plan, the quality management, which is again, the process of identifying quality requirements. In other words, where within your project, you need to check for quality. And then whether that particular piece of the pie within the project matches to your quality po policy provided by the organization that you work for. It could be the case where the customers also provide you a list of quality assurance checklist. And then you just kind of make sure as a project manager that you meet those requirements. The second is the managed quality itself. So this is where you are actually managing the quality controls or not controls, but the processes. And it's simply the process of translating the quality management plan into executable activities. So now you have all these tasks and subtasks on the schedule. So you need to ensure which task requires a keen eye of quality checks. And third is the quality control, which is simply the process of monitoring and then recording the results. So two keywords, you monitor quality and then you record the results of executing the activities. And this is because you would like to gauge or assess the performance of your team members or the project itself. So broadly, as per PMBOK, it's section eight or chapter eight, point one, eight point two, and eight point three, which entails the project quality management overview. So, which is again, the processes as discrete processes with defined interface while in practice they overlap. So you may have areas they look alike, but yet as per the PMBOK guide, they're defined as individual or discrete processes or steps. And again, as a homework, just kind of browse through it, take a look at it. So you understand the details of the project quality management overview. The major process interrelations, since quality control is a subject where you'd have to basically 
have a watchful eye 24 7 right because every time a task is completed you need to make sure that it's quality oriented or it adheres to the quality policies so the inner relations are primarily the overview of the major inputs and outputs of the project quality management processes and the inner relations of these processes in the knowledge area so they're mapped to the processes to the knowledge area and primarily the quality management process is concerned with the quality that the work needs to have so really the focus is on the actual work being delivered managing quality is concerned with managing the quality processes throughout the project and during this managed quality process quality requirements identified during the plan are turned into test and evaluation instruments so sort of like milestones or checks and balances at different stages of your project which are typically applied during the control process so the quality control is again concerned with comparing the the results with the requirements again you have a policy right quality policy and then you see the outcomes of the project and then just kind of compare it and match it up here are the key concepts that i like you guys to remember and understand the project quality management addresses the management of the project and the deliverables of the project okay and that's important so it's not again getting into the bug fixes or getting into the nitty-gritty or why something is wrong that's not really what that's all about it's simply addressing the management from the management perspective and then of course the final deliverables of the project it also applies to all projects regardless of the nature of their deliverables quality measures and techniques are specific to the type of project that you're actually carrying out as a project manager so every project is unique as we already know hence it comes with its own set of quality criteria for example the project quality management of software projects may use different approaches as compared to nuclear power plants projects so in either of the two projects what's essentially happening is that you need to still meet quality requirements provided either by the customer or the internal stakeholders so for example meeting customer requirements by overworking the project team may result in decreased profits because of course you're spending more time you're spending more resources you're spending more money and that also increases the levels of the project risk as well employee attrition errors or rework etc meeting project schedule objectives by rushing planned activities inspections may also result in undetected errors decreased profits so you want to make sure that every time you're actually implementing the quality checks using various tools that we'll talk about a little later in this lesson you would like to make sure that you're actually remain within the scope right so you're not going too much far out where you're actually incurring a lot of costs and at the same time you're not actually not focusing on quality at all where you're actually not delivering the quality product so the plan quality management is the process again of identifying quality requirements standards for the given project that you're working on and of course its deliverables as well importantly here is the documentation how the project will demonstrate compliance with quality requirements and like i mentioned most project managers since you're actually typically in the real world scenario you're managing two to three projects at one given point in time right that's that's fairly common so documentation for each different project could become cumbersome because it takes a lot of time sometimes to actually document all of these processes and quality checks and documentation so the benefit however of this process is that it provides guidance and direction on how quality will be managed and verified throughout the project so you have the three typical phases the inputs tools and techniques are in the middle and then of course you get the output so as a homework for this lesson just go through these tools and techniques the inputs and the outputs so you understand the quality management phases the concept of coq which is cost of quality 
associated with the project consists of one or more of the following, which are essentially three, it could be more. Prevention costs, appraisal costs, and then the failure costs, whether they're internal or external. So prevention costs typically include, let's say you build a quality product, okay? Now in building a quality product, you need training, you need document processes, equipment, time to do it right. Similarly for appraisal costs, where you're actually assessing the quality, you need testing of your product destructive testing, loss, inspections. Similarly, that's all part of the cost of conformance. And the last one is the failure costs, which again, the cost related to non-conformance to your product or services. So the cost of non-conformance is again, internal failure costs or external failure costs, like liabilities, warranty loss, lost business, and so on. So here in cost of quality, the money spent during the project is to avoid failures and that relates to the cost of conformance. Whereas the money spent during and after the project because of failures is cost of non-conformance. And that's the key point here. Data representation. Of course, when you talk about data, you talk about documentation, the different tools or types that are available are flowcharts. You can flowchart your data. You can logically structure your data and create a data model using Excel or dashboards. You can create matrix diagrams. You can do mind mapping techniques that are out there. So for example, a flowchart simply shows the activities, decision points, branching loops, paths, and overall order of processing by mapping the operational details of procedures that exist within the horizontal value chain. So the CPOC model, or the SIPOC, right, as they call it, is just an example, a version of a value chain known as the CPOC, which is suppliers, inputs, process, outputs, and customers model. So the entire model can again be documented at requirements list, measurement list, for example, and so on. Similarly, suppliers can provide input to these processes and then, of course, from these processes, you create an input or you devise input and then you pr provide it to the customer as deliverables. Managing quality is the process of translating quality management plan into executable quality activities because you can't really implement a quality insurance method right to the entire project so you need to take a look at each tasks each activities within your project schedule and then decide and take a look at well this activity makes sense right so i need to check whether this was performed correctly or not or as per the standards or not the benefit of course is that it increases the probability of meeting the quality objectives and then identifying ineffective processes at the same time the managed quality uses the data and results from the control quality process to reflect the overall quality status of the project to stakeholders. And this process, of course, can be applied at any stage of the project to any task or activity. Data representation, as I mentioned earlier briefly, again, you can represent your data by creating additional tools or use these tools like affinity diagrams. You can create cause and effect diagrams. Here's a fishbone diagram as well that you can take a look at, which is again known as the cause and effect as well. Flowcharts, histograms, matrix diagrams, scatter diagrams. And again, these are primarily statistical techniques. So if you're comfortable with, let's say, SPSS is a, is a good software by IBM that you can use to input data in rows and columns, and then of course run all kinds of regression analyses, linear correlations, and so on. Quality control, again, is the process of monitoring and then recording. Again, these two keywords I mentioned earlier as well. And that's something a project manager needs to kind of memorize, right? So for quality control, it's monitoring and then recording the results. Documentation matters. The benefit of this process is verifying that project deliverables and 
work meet the requirements again for the internal stakeholders or external stakeholders and for final acceptance as well this particular process the quality control process also determines if the project outputs do what they were intended to do and I want to spend some time and just kind of talk about this I'll give you an example as well sometimes your dev team creates the STD you have the technical design document created you have the entire blueprint ready they actually go in and develop the software again I'm talking about software based projects right and once the project is all developed all of a sudden at the end you find well geez that's not what we really wanted right so this quality control monitoring ensures that project managers are on top of things right so you exactly know which activities are being done whether they are complying to the final outcomes and deliverables or not and that's a good way to implement again monitor and record what I typically use in my projects as well and they're very very helpful and you can again use this process anywhere in the project and finally the last slide just quick overview of the quality control tools data gathering techniques can be used for this process you can use checklists in a structured manner you can use check sheets which are also known as the tally sheets right where you can just put in numbers and just tally and make sure everything is working fine and they're typically used to organize facts in a manner that will facilitate the effective collection of useful data and for example in this check sheets data that you see on here on the slide you can actually take this data input into a statistical software like I mentioned SPSS by IBM you can actually input the input this data and then run a lot of tests and the outcome the results of those statistical tests will amaze you by the way okay and I've used that so they're very very helpful so make use of these tools and statistical sampling like I mentioned once you have the data you can of course run a mean median standard deviation and other various uh, analyses as well questionnaires and surveys are also a good tool to use if you want to check based on the type of project that you're working on perfect so in this lesson just wanted to highlight the concept of quality control quality checks how to manage quality as a project manager in a real world scenario starting off with smaller projects documentation is important so the outcomes and monitoring and then recording those data running tests on that data ensuring that all of the activities within your project comply with the policies set forth by your organization or by clients so I hope this helps practice with some of these understand these concepts if you have any questions feel free to post them in the discussion area I'll be happy to answer so with this let's move to the next lesson